I'm particularly looking forward to the presentation of Klaus Ullmann. I have the pleasure to introduce Klaus, who will take us into a world of, yeah, that seems from outside a bit abstract and unreal. Um, allow me just a few words about Klaus before I hand over to Klaus and about his passion for flying. Klaus is a man with thousands of achievements, a pilot who has flown over 3,000 kilometers without usage of engines at all. The only man who has flown over the Himalaya and managed to climb over the Mount Everest without any propulsion. Flowing unbelievable distances just powered by solar energy. A pioneer in pure electric flying with hundreds of hours experience. Klaus is an entrepreneur, a pilot for sure, record hunter, adventurer with serious experiences in new modes of transport and aims to fly around the world just by using solar energy. I look forward to Klaus' presentation, taking us with him into his special world and giving us insight into technology, engineering knowledge and his stunning experiences around the world. Klaus, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you, and the stage is yours. Thank you very much. So, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm coming from the gliding world, as uh, Stefan mentioned. And uh, so uh, it was not uh, true at 100%. Of course, I needed some fossil energy in order to get the initial altitudes that you need to start because what come what goes up must come down uh, so but at this 3000 kilometer flight i can say that i used more or less one milliliter of fossil fuel per kilometer which is not that much so around about three liters to get the initial altitude and then uh, you have the intelligent use of renewable energies uh, for the whole day long. Uh, as you can imagine, 3000 kilometers, you need uh, round about 15 hours with an average of 200 kilometers. Uh, but uh, today we want to speak a little bit about electric flight, about the future of aviation. So, but allow me to share a little bit my uh, gliding exper experience, my dreamland, Patagonia with this small video. This was uh, filmed during a mission uh, with German Aerospace, a scientific mission in the south of Patagonia based on El Calafate. You can see as well uh, the big downdrafts in the lee of the mountains and the climbing air in um, with uh, so-called waves. And you can see a Stemme glider, which is a motor glider as well, and a real plane with distances you can fly up to 1200, 1300 kilometers. Uh, and uh, it's really a very nice aerodynamic design. Enjoy. music. So, due to my gliding experience, so I have around about 30,000 hours in total with uh, different aircrafts, uh, I came to the University of Stuttgart, the Institute für Flugzeugbau in Stuttgart, and they built uh, in 2010, so some years ago, they built uh, the first and most successful uh, electric plane in the world. So the e-genius, before it should be a 
hydrogenous, but at this time the technology was not ready. So uh, they made a battery driven plane and we could go with this battery driven plane uh, one year later after the construction. Here just uh, two planes. The one as well from the University of Stuttgart is the Ikari 2, a solar plane, which I can made several world records. And on the right hand side, you see the E-Genius, uh, which was then the second plane they built with a team of students and engineers, a small team, only 30 people who built this plane in eight months. I was really very astonished when I came to the team. So uh, after the construction of the plane, we had the opportunity to participate on a course in California, uh, which was created by the NATA, Na, 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 uh, NASA, sorry. <laughs> I was by NATO actually, <laughs> so the NASA and uh, so we participated there. It was a green flight challenge in Santa Rosa, California, and uh, we made the second place. It was a pity only the second place because uh, there were $1.5 million the prize for the first. Uh, so we had really the smallest amount of, uh, en of uh, energy uh, in the battery you have a uh, fuel equivalent and so we had only uh, 1.3 liters during 100 kilometers. Imagine that with a car, so there's no car who can do that. Uh, we had a second uh, competition two years later in Strasbourg, Berlin uh, and the task was to have less amount of energy compared to the speed because that is what is interesting uh, when you are flying. So and we can see uh, on one day of this that we made 400 kilometers distance uh, and we had only 1.2 liters uh, which is five times better than a comparable plane. Uh, in this case a Stemme glider as well which I usually use and there you can see five times more of energy used in this case. So uh, with this plane, I could realize uh, in the following uh, steps, uh, five world records uh, climbing up to 6,300 meters. And we made the flight only battery driven with uh, uh, 500 kilometers. And so if you compare at this time in 2014, the uh, it was uh, relatively cheap, the kilowatt hours. So we made 500 kilometers with eight euros 40. That is really very cheap. And this is one of the advantage, 500 kilometers. So next step, uh, in order to show a little bit what we can do with this plane, we started in the near Stuttgart, Hanweide, and we crossed the Alps, climbing up to 4,000 meters, landing a little bit north of Milano. So the costs for this flight were 10 euros. And uh, the flight back on the same day, it was near 700 kilometers. So we used the battery charging in uh, Italia and uh, 365 kilometers, 4,000 meters once again to cross the Alps. So the cost 11 euros. So the pizza that we uh, ate in uh, uh, Varese, north of Milano, uh, was more expensive than the costs of this flight. So how it is possible uh, that is so different if you compare with combustion engine, a pure electric plane. So, and you can see, uh, usually these planes, they have a propeller in the front and they have a kind of cowling, which is uh, aerodynamical uh, obstacle. And so the flow around the fuselage is not a laminar flow. Uh, you need a lot of energy for this kind of thing. If you compare, for example, with a usual, usual uh, plane, you have a Cessna 172. Uh, so it's a really uh, aerodynamic obstacle in the, in the, uh, in the air uh, compared with a glider. So you can see the combustion engine in this case 
has a maximum efficiency so the energy that you take inside in percentage of what you get outside uh, and 30% uh, maximum uh, electric motor has 95% uh, efficiency so 95% of the energy is in the propulsion the rest is losses in, usually in temperature so uh, another point is the freedom of configuration so you can take these small engines which are which fits much more in the aer aerodynamic of a plane uh, you can use it for example like in the ingenious in the tail because they are not very heavy and they have a lot of power compared with the same power of a combustion engine the next uh, stuff and this is the main advantage if you look at this formula so you see uh, that we have uh, at first the eta which is uh, the greek letter for efficiency uh, you compare it 30 percent for the combustion engine with 95 percent with the electric motor and the second thing which is very important as well uh, is the aerodynamic efficiency and there we see a crucial role is playing the propeller so propeller uh, if it's windmilling in the air and uh, makes no thrust it's important that you have a very good propeller and the gliding ratio what we call of the plane so i would say a cessna 172 has a gliding ratio uh, like a piano uh, roundabout and the glider so i'm one to one to ten so with 1000 meters uh, if the motor stops you can reach probably a field uh, in one t uh, uh, in 10 kilometers distance with a modern glider you have at least 50 so five times more uh, range that you can do without the motor so this l to d is lift to drag and this is uh, aerodynamic stuff so we can say it's two times better at least compared to even an aerodynamic uh, uh, motor plane. That sounds so good that you say, why do we, don't we fly all, all the planes now electric? Of course, there are some drawbacks. One of the essential drawbacks is the specific energy that we have in a plane uh, in, in, uh, with, with uh, the batteries. Batteries nowadays they have 230 watt hours per kilogram compared with fuel is 50 times more energy in one kilogram of kerosene so even if the batteries will be better and this is just inside they spoke since 12 years about uh, this issue but uh, now probably in the next two years we will see 500 watt hours per kilogram uh, but it's still 25 uh, time more with uh, one kilo of fuel so another point is the price of the batteries the price of the batteries is very expensive you see this from 2014 and nowadays it's three times more expensive so this is something very important and of course what we know as well when we're driving an electric car the time of charging the batteries is an issue as well so if you want to go uh, drink some coffee somewhere and uh, you have to wait three hours until the batteries are full uh, probably it's night uh, if you come back so now we have this beautiful plane from the university of stuttgart 500 kilometers real distance is 400 kilometers plus reserve you need always a reserve and uh, so uh, how can we go from these small planes to our commercial airplanes there's no doubt if you want to cross the atlantic ocean you cannot do it with a battery let's take a 747 or a 380 you can probably cross I, I never calculated it if you make full of batteries you take no passenger you say probably one pilot then probably you can cross the Atlantic Ocean I'm not sure uh, but with 400 passengers certainly you cannot so uh, what we need is a hybrid system if we want to make a electric propulsion 
So when we are looking here on the first, uh, can I look here for that? Can I see something? No, you cannot see it or not. So we have the electric propulsion set on the right side with the electric motor and the uh, propeller. Uh, you have an inverter which from uh, DC to AC, the current which you need for an electric motor. And we see a new uh, component which is a combustion engine which drives an electric motor in order to create electricity for the electric propulsion system. So uh, with this new system which they built in, uh, the Egenius is a test bed for uh, new technologies. The propulsion system is perfect, electric 95%. Uh, now they used a smart motor from cars which has round about 50 kilowatt performance and uh, less batteries replaced by fuel. We saw the energy uh, in the fuel is much more. And there we could make eight new world records with this plane in a hybrid situation. And we, of course, we used fuel. So the FAI, the, authorization, uh, the, the authorities for these world records say, okay, electric propulsion, the propulsion set is the uh, relevant factor that you can make world records. So eight world records, we could fly up to 2000 kilometers. So that was four times more than these battery driven, uh, battery driven records that we had before, 500 kilometers to 2000. And I think we can fly up to 3000 kilometers without too much problems. It's just a problem of your back <laughs> sitting in the plane. Uh, it's different. There are other players on the market. Now we go a little bit more in the commercial uh, range. So there is, it's funny, it's a glider pilot. Uh, the chief, uh, the CEO of Apus Group, and they are planning a fuel cell plane, uh, the I-2, that is a, a as well a test bed, but this will be a plane which should be certified working only with hydrogen and fuel cells. You have to know fuel cells could be the future. The technology is in developing. You have fuel cells on the ground, but it's very different if you take fuel cells inside of a plane, uh, because uh, on the ground, if it's heating up, uh, the fuel cells says, okay, stop, I'm too hot in the plane. You would not like uh, if there's a technology which says stop that you are the pilot and you make the decision uh, what the plane does. Uh, but if there's an overheating, you have to imagine if you have a fuel cell which has 60% of efficiency, you have still 40% of heat that you have to go uh, to take out of the plane because it's uh, not, uh, if not, it's too hot. I'm back, uh, that was the wrong distance, so. Once again, so that's the right side. So one thing which is very special with this plane or with this technology is that he made the right thing. He's a glider pilot as well. So he made aerodynamics better wings. It's a B uh, motor. And so he has the energy in the wings. So the spare which is the essential part to take the, the forces, aerodynamic forces, is at the same time the hydrogen tubes, and there is all the energy. So uh, hydrogen has the highest energy density uh, of any combustion that you have. So they make not only this plane, so the, the first plane probably will fly even at the end of the year, is a uh, collaboration with Rolls-Royce. Rolls -Royce. This is as well a good approach from my opinion. So they have four motors, two diesel engines near the fuselage and two electric engines. So it's as well a plane for test, a test bed uh, to test the electric motors and to test uh, as well uh, the hybrid system. 
safety is always an issue. And what you can see below, and this, from my opinion, it's the most interesting thing. Uh, you see the I-5, which is a transport com commuter, or even for passengers, uh, you see two of them, one with, a, with two electric motors, one with four electric motors. And there you can transport 1.7 uh, tons that would be very interesting, for example, for companies like FedEx or DHL. Uh, we have to say as well, the uh, hydrogen infrastructure that you need in this place is much more easier to install uh, on an airfield. Uh, at the same moment, you can use as well uh, for other transports uh, that is possible as well to fill up your hydrogen with uh, different possibilities. From one point of view, you can make liquid hydrogen. Problem is minus 253 degrees. And uh, you can as well with pressure between 350 and 700 100 bars. That's what we do nowadays. So, and you see as well uh, the roadmap that they have. So the first plane with its experimental plane with Rolls-Royce will fly probably at the end of the year. And uh, during 2024, they will fly with the uh, B-Motor uh, in 2040, uh, 40, uh, 20, 2025. They want to make uh, the certification, which is a difficult approach, but this APOS group has everything to do that. They made uh, different planes. Uh, the certification. It's a long way to Tipperary to get the certification for, for a plane, especially with complete new technologies. So now a little bit back what I have. Uh, so I'm working a little bit always what I have, what can I do with. Uh, I have this beautiful glider that you saw in this nice video. And uh, so this glider is at the same time a plane, you have a 115 horsepower uh, Rotax engine, turbocharged, and with this plane we flew above the Everest with a motor. It was a second plane who had the pots outside to make three-dimensional photos. Uh, so the glider has a gliding ratio which is 30% better than that of the Egenius. So my problem with the Egenius is that it's a university plane and of course, I would like to fly it always, but I would like to fly around the world, but I cannot because they need it as a test bed for the students. It has other things to do. And I'm very happy that I could fly with this plane uh, at least sometimes for one week, making all these world records. So uh, with the E-Flight Stammer, we changed something. If you could see in the fuselage, we changed uh, the the front part, uh, normally the propeller is in the front under uh, a cowling and it's a propeller which is folding up. Uh, now we made a fixed propeller and uh, we use the motor compartment which is behind the two pilots. We used it uh, to get rid of 140 kilo of this combustion engine and this all the, the side uh, uh, things that you have on a motor. Uh, and what we do in aviation, always we make a redundant system. So we have an electric motor, very good electric motor, which has uh, a dual winding system. So there's more safety. We have the electronics to make uh, work these brushless motors. It's more complicated than an on and off. Uh, we have two uh, inverters for them. We have a battery system, several batteries as well, and we have this famous range extender. The system was optimized from the weight because the Egenius, they made stronger motors which are heavier. So for example, the motor they used is 10 kilos more uh, the, than our motor. They need more power because I have a better gliding ratio and I have less weight. Weight is an issue as well in aviation. So we have a small combustion engine, an industrial motor, which works quite well, combined with an electric motor in order to generate the electricity that we need. I have a very small team. Uh, my engineer that I found by good luck 
uh, Carl Pickern worked more than 30 years in electronics. Uh, he worked in uh, General Electric. He worked at KUKA. So, uh, and he is a glider pilot, of course, a passionate, and he helps me a lot. Uh, together with a team of the University of Trier under uh, Professor Michael Hofmann. And this small team, we made wonderful work. So you can see the nose of this stemme is a little bit longer and uh, has a little bit more aerodynamic configuration in order to avoid this flow, which is going outside of these large cowlings of mo normal motor planes. And uh, it's everything is optimized. The propeller is optimized. The cooling system is optimized uh, because when you are driving, flying with a motor, you have as well cooling openings. Uh, and then that is a lot of resistance as well. And all these things are optimized in this plane. Uh, you can see here uh, how we integrate the motor and the electronics in the front of the plane. Propeller, so you see the airflow could go along the plane without uh, this uh, going out of the, the laminar flow. And uh, of course, the battery packs, they have to be light. Uh, so it's not only the battery cells, it's always the pack uh, which is in this is all done by my engineer who has uh, something like five, five different workshops in his house. I'm always amazed when I'm visiting him. It's absolutely interesting what he is doing. So uh, we see as well the prof professional approach uh, that is not uh, the, the things that he is doing. He has machines and these machines, uh, they connect every uh, battery cell uh, with low temperatures connections. And that the same, uh, these connections that you can see on the right hand side below, uh, they are fuses as well in the question of a short circuit of one battery, uh, then the system will still function. Uh, you have to know that one of the problems that we have with batteries is that for aviation, you need uh, some tests with a thermal runaway. So you have to make a short circuit uh, with this battery uh, and it does not burn the battery. There is one cell which will burn and they do not have the possibility of the con uh, contamination of the others. So just the re range extender and uh, we, you see with, with the motor, with the electric motor, it's like a, a small uh, charger for uh, your electric device in the house. You see behind the motor compartment where are the batteries and this range extender. Uh, essential thing as well is that I can take out the range extender, replace it with a full uh, battery, and then I can fly as well up to two and a half, three hours with this plane. So what do I want to do with this plane? I want to fly around the world. So we have a range with two persons on board of at least 3000 kilometers, a cruise speed of 180 kilometers, and it's only 40,000 kilometers to fly around the planet. Uh, of course, I want to make a lot of stopovers uh, in order to prom uh, promote uh, the electric electric uh, powertrains with emotions. You need a storytelling, a great story with great pictures. And uh, of course, sponsors are vol welcome uh, to help me because uh, the more, the most expensive is to make uh, the social uh, medias and uh, all uh, this stuff. It's very important to do that. Uh, and I, one of the stopovers that I want to do is on the Mount Everest in uh, Nepal, where I made a uh, 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 scientific mission with the uh, German aerospace. So uh, imagine you are flying, you can make the video, imagine you are flying uh, above the Mount Everest, but with the, with the pure electric plane charged with solar panels and imagine it's not only the Mount Everest that you fly, you will fly above all the 8,000 meter mountains in the Himalayas without one drop of fuel. That is one of the goals. There's another station I want to make in Japan 
I will organize that with some Japanese friends to fly from the very south of uh, Japan to the very north uh, without a drop of fuel, with only battery, using intelligent uh, way of using the energy that it's outside as well. So, of course, we will use a tailwind and we will use vertical winds together with the electric energy. That's my goal that I have for the next year. So enjoy this. You see the glaciers of the Mount Everest here below me. It was the last day of this scientific mission and I could make uh, my dream surfing along the Mount Everest mountain. Uh, this was one of the days we had not too much wind, but just a little wind. And it was really absolutely amazing to fly along the, this, the biggest mountain of the world and to have uh, this small lift on the ridge. The funny thing, the wind was not very strong in the lower altitudes and up in the higher altitudes, the wind was up to 130 kilometers per hour. And I found just on a strange place, a small little wave, which helped me to go above the summit. It was a peaceful flight and it was really fantastic event on this last day you see the wing along the ridge with these small lifts and with all these beautiful mountains around you see the Lukla valley when i'm coming right hand side below this is where all the everest expeditions are starting the pumori on the right hand side this pyramid and then on the right side, Tibet, the, on the Chinese side. Of course, you use oxygen in this altitude because you are very fast going dizzy. That's one of the dangers that you have in these altitudes above. So I flew up to 9,200 meters above the Hyber's Mount. Here you can see that is the original uh, speed. You can see that the wind was much stronger than now. And then I could climb with this renewable energies with a lift that gave me mother nature. You can see I'm climbing just, I'm standing there still and I'm climbing above the Mount Everest. It was really a dream. So we can do a lot in the future from my opinion. Thank you very much for your attention.